Hey everybody, it's Marty with Sea on the Mountain. I'm working on the awesome hive. You are awesome hive. Uh, Xavier's hive. We're gonna try to pull, see what we got for honey stores, the process. And uh, been pulling honey this morning and trying to get it all done so I can go hunting. Anyway, but uh, we're getting our chores done, getting priorities done. We're trying to pull all the honey. And then once we pull the honey, we can start feeding these bees up really well. So that's what I've been doing today. And I thought I'd do this little video on Xavier's hive and uh, give him a little smoke here. Uh, pull the top off and observe them. It's getting late. Should have probably had some of this done, but some of these bees haven't capped off. It's that, that time every year where uh, they uh, don't seem to cap off and, and you just keep pushing back the honey pull time. But eventually you just gotta call it and, and whatever they have left, I try to get them down to one hive, one hive body for the winter, but sometimes it doesn't happen. You gotta give them two and uh, let them finish curing the honey. So uh, always check for our queen. But we have an excluder down here, so she's not here. Uh, go through this hive real quick, give them a little smoke, push them down a little bit. Once again, I wanna thank uh, sponsors of this hive, Xavier helping the beekeeper make it financially. And uh, honey crop's not as good this year because these are all first year bees. The, the, the whole trick is to, to, to survive these bees through the winter. So we're gonna feed them up really well. And then I'll, I'll do a mite test, but I'm probably gonna go ahead and treat all of them at least once. Uh, because you always have mites, even, even if you don't show much, uh, you'll probably miss them. There's no honey in there, so scoot that on over. And uh, we'll see what we got in this top honey super. None there, but they're working. Here we're finally getting into some honey here. And uh, see what we got here. Got some honey there, and we do the test to see if there's any. It's cured, even though it's not capped. You shake it. See that side all has honey. I got to get my honey brush, my bee brush, rather. So get this over here. I always carry a wet rag and wipe my hands a little bit. So I just uh, get this and just give them a little gentle, uh, you, you keep your brush down so it doesn't hurt the bees. It just kind of knocks them off the comb. And then uh, and then I run them over to the big bee box and put them in there so no bees get on it. So that's a beautiful comb of honey. Look at that, Xavier Hive. Beautiful, beautiful comb or uh, frame. It's a super frame, it's a smaller frame of honey there. See that, how pretty that is? It's beautiful, the bees do that. And this side, it's cured, they just haven't capped it. We can take that, and what you do is it's called the flick test, and I also have a refractometer, and uh, it'll test that, and, and that's probably, I'd say 17 or 16, we're really dry in Colorado. So uh, that's gonna be plenty good, under 19 is good. And most of our honey around here, it's 16. Uh, water content. So there you go. So I'll go stash this in the uh, big bee box so the bees won't bother me. Let me go ahead and put you on pause while I'm doing that. Uh, I can get my glove off. So so as soon as I pull all the honey off, we, we then feed them sugar water, one-to-one -one solution. I'll have to mix that around a little bit better. We'll feed them one-to-one -one solution. I put a little honey bee healthy in there, not much, to keep this preserved so it doesn't get bad. It's like a uh, essential oils and uh, stuff in there. I don't put much in there, just enough to keep the, the sugar from fermenting. Um, so we'll work on this hive. Looks like we have some good honey in here. And pull as much as we can and uh, be done with it. So get them up. Uh, so this is the time of year you're bolstering them up, get their honey stores pulled off. We're trying to get them all down in the one box. And, uh, and then we'll try to get this box to be about 90 to 100 pounds of bees and pollen and, and honey is the is the goal. Wipe my hands off here. So here we go again, looking for honey that's cured enough. And that looks good there. That looks good there. So just give them a little shake and then finish it off with the bee brush. And then we just do this. Look how beautiful that is. So it's bees package this. Raw honey. One thing I was going to tell you about 
getting from a local beekeeper is you're getting honey from your local area for allergies and that kind of thing. They say it's better for you. Plus, I don't heat this up. Uh, it's called raw honey. And we just cut the cappings. I scrap the ca cappings off, let it drip into a thing, uh, a uh, honey uh, capping tank. Uh, I've kind of designed my own. And then from there, we uh, put an extractor in the uh, centrifugal uh, pressure pulls the honey out and it goes into a, a strainer and then it goes into a, a five gallon bucket and then from the five gallon bucket I pour right into a, a jar so it's not it's not heated uh, like you would with the, the big heating process the big honey companies they heat they have heaters and stuff and heat it up they try to keep it from being too hot now I do try to heat the room up to about 80 degrees and it's hard for me to do with little heaters but uh, we get it done and that way the honey itself is not heated and it has all the good properties still in it. It has uh, pollen and uh, all the elements and it's just healthy for you. So uh, that's well worth it. Uh, paying the uh, small beekeeper, even if you have to pay more, uh, is well worth it. It keeps more people in beekeeping. Uh, the frames are expensive. The foundation's expensive. The boxes are expensive. You got to paint the box, put the box together, uh, assemble all these uh, pieces here, buy the pieces. Time-wise, it's, it's, it's a, really a labor of love to do beekeeping. Plus, they, they benefit our environment. They benefit this whole neighborhood. Uh, we have uh, people with all kinds of trees, all kinds of fruit trees, uh, gardens. Uh, the bees do all of that. And so that's just part of, the, uh, of what um, the beekeeper goes through. You don't see a lot of his costs in time and labor. And so it's well worth it to keep the small uh, farmer in business. And we charge, and it's local farm to table. You know, you can come to the beehives and see them. You see them on video. You see how we take care of them. We see how that we care about the bees and the environment. And there, and there's something about, I think we've been so accustomed from big food and stuff to paying cheaper and cheaper prices for things, but there's just great value in something like this. It's like a artisan crafts uh, type food here uh, that's so beautiful and raw and it's well worth it. So I do charge a little bit more for my honey. I don't. I don't apologize for that. Um, it's it's worth more. Um, it's just I know it's taken care of. You can come look. I educate. We teach people about uh, honey and the raw honey and how it's taken care of. So just so you know, um, and we appreciate those that, that I have customers I've had for 25 years, and uh, they don't qualm about the the prices going up because it's inflation. Life, everything goes up. Anything of value goes up. And so it, it, it's worth it to pay uh, a fair price for a great product. And this is, there's no product better than this that's packaged basically by the bees. I have comb honey available too where we just cut, we cut it out, put it in a little plastic container and sell it directly to you. And you can actually eat the wax and, and, and it's fibrous. It's good for your digestive system. Uh, you can't look at that beautiful honey that's taken from, uh, the uh, the sweetness of the land, literally, uh, the nectars of all the trees and the flowers and everything, a beautiful product. So don't ever feel bad if you pay uh, extra for, for honey. It's just, uh, you can go to the big box stores, that'll be mixed honey from all over a region probably. And uh, they make it, they mix it to make it lighter. Uh, whereas the darker the honey, and this is not very dark honey, but the darker the honey, the more uh, nutritional properties it has to it. And so uh, anyway, but I just thought I'd give you a little lecture today as we get into the Xavier Hive, why you would pay more and want to pay more for high quality food. And this is the highest quality food I think you could ever eat. Uh, don't eat a lot of it though, because it's very powerful. Uh, you just have a little bit, you know, and, and, it, and it's very powerful in all of its qualities. I just thought I'd give that to you. I'm going to go ahead and turn, um, put you on pause for a while, get this done so I can move through here and not disturb these bees. Disturb the bees as little as possible is what we're trying to do. Hey everybody, Marty again. I did something with this You Are Awesome Hive Xavier, uh, the the uh, New Mexico hive. I uh, I went ahead, I don't normally do this, but they're so packed out and they've done such a good job with uh, uh, collecting of uh, nectar, but they're not gonna, they're, I pulled a fair amount of honey from them, so we got our honey, that's great. 
Uh, but the deal is, um, there's just so much nectar, and they've done a good job. So I'm going to go ahead for the winter and do like the, I used to do in the old days and give them two brood chambers. It's a very strong hive. I saw the queen. She's magnificent, and she's done a great job. So we're going to go ahead and give them two uh, brood boxes for the winter. I normally like to get them all down to one. It's just more efficient. And uh, But they have so many bees, and, and, and this hive is so full, and I can't pull any more honey because it's nectar and it's not ready. So I'm just going to give it all to them, let them have this. I'm still going to feed them up, and uh, they should do well for the winter. Uh, the bottom box has plenty of food. She's still laying good. There's plenty of brood. She's a strong queen. So this hive, I'm hoping my, to get them through the winter, we're going to do a mite test probably uh, here at the end of the week or next week and check them. But I'm probably going to do all of these hives at least one treatment of the oxalic acid vapor. And then uh, uh, and the whole thing, even this one, even though they have plenty of food right now, I'm still going to pack them up. I'm going to feed them one-to-one -one sugar water right now, and then it, uh, probably in a couple weeks I'll go uh, a little bit thicker and uh, just get the bees really well fed for the winter, take care of them. Uh, I'm also uh, moving the hives. I'll probably move these two hives closer together, move all the hives closer together so they can help each other with heat. And so I've been, a uh, hive right over here or there, I've been moving them about two or three inches every day. I'll eventually have them moved really close together, and then that'll create there's there won't be cold space right in here there'll be these will be moved close together and they'll be able to share heat uh, in each hive and that'll help them survive this is a really good top well insulated I'll probably put an insulation sheet I'm going to cut some uh, holes in the top here uh, and, and put screen mesh for ventilation they need ventilation uh, you don't want them to uh, uh, get overheated sweat and then they get cold and chilled and it kills your bees so you got to keep ventilation in there. i am also learned a, a, a trick where you can do a fondant candy, make candy from the sugar. But I decided what I'll do this year. I found a beekeeper puts a piece of newspaper on the top with a little shim board. And I might make some shims for these. And then you put just, just regular sugar on top. And if they run out of storage, which I doubt this hive will, they can go up and eat the granulated sugar probably uh, February, Jan end of February, uh, March is usually when they start getting low in their stores, but I'll be checking them through the winter when on the warm days and taking a quick look, seeing how they're doing on their stores. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're pulling the honey, getting ready. Uh, we'll extract it. We'll bottle it. My daughter Randy and my grandson Atticus came by last uh, Saturday, helped me do a bunch of bottling. We got that uh, done. We're caught up, and so now I just got to finish. I got to pull the honey off this one. And I think I'm done pulling honey after I pull the Grand's Sweet Caroline Hive. This was the biggest hive. Then the, the Amy Jensen Hive. I think I'm going to let Amy Jensen have two supers for the winter. Uh, that's a powerful, strong hive. Um, and then we'll see what we're going to do here. The queen got above the queen excluder in this hive. She must be a thin queen or I somehow let her get up. So I'm going to have to push her down. And I'll probably give them two anyway because... There's going to be brood down there, and I don't want to hurt the brood unless I can move the brood to the bottom, then screen it off. But I think I'll give this hive two, two supers for the winter. So I'll have three, three hives. My three strongest will get two big, not supers, brood boxes, the big boxes, uh, for the winter and feed them up strong. And hopefully we can get three hives out of this next year, plus this one, three hives out of this, three hives out of that. We'll split them. And, uh, and then multiply our bees that way. Otherwise, they'll, they'll get too big, they'll swarm, and you'll lose them. So uh, we'll, we'll do our splits. We'll try to keep all of the bees going well so we can do splits. But that's it. Share, like, and subscribe. Uh, it is a wonderful day on the mountain. It's, uh, it's, it's archery season. I haven't had a chance to get out yet. But I've been shooting. I got my 50 pin in now, so I feel pretty confident. I hope to get out there. Uh, there's a lot of pressure up in the mountains uh, in my hunting areas because of the fires. So we'll see. We we'll just got to go try, right? And uh, but anyway, we'll do some videos on the uh, elk hunt. Um, but I got to get the bees taken care of. Uh, so now pull the pull the uh, uh, the honey supers. Get all the honey pulled off them because you can't feed them till you get your honey pulled off because you don't want to mix sugar water in with your honey. That's not right. 
So you pull all your supers, plus you can't treat them with honey supers on with the oxalic acid. So you got to pull all your honey that you're going to pull, and then you, uh, and then you uh, can treat them, you can feed them, and get them ready for winter. We're, we're trying to get the singles to about 100 pounds, 90 to 100 pounds, full, chock full of uh, reserves and bees to get them through the winter. These big ones, hopefully we'll get them to 200 pounds. Um, and they'll be more than ready for the spring. So, but we got to get the mites off of them, and that's what the oxalic acid does. Kills them little mites, and then your bees are strong, and they can survive the winter. Anyway, share, like, and subscribe. Thank you to all my sponsors. You're all, they're all wonderful. There's the Colorado Custom Concrete over there, Guadalupe Hive. There's the Blessed Eva Hive, the Trey Dininger Hive, uh, the, uh, uh, the Armstrong, uh, Shining the Light Since 1992, Joe Knudsen, uh, the uh, Amber Francois, who else do we have over here? We've got the Xavier Hive, uh, the Art Vasquez Hive. I, I got a report on that. I lost my queen in there, and uh, they have a new queen, and she's a virgin, so hopefully she can get bred. And I got the NGM, NGM Zackham Hive, the Gal Hive, and the uh, um, Delmont Acres Hive. Um, I have to get into the NGM Zackham too and pull the rest of the honey. Everybody else except a few of these uh, has feed on them. So we got to get these other hives. After I get the honey pulled, we'll get feed on all of them and get them going for the winter. Share, like, and subscribe. We're at 252 subscribers. We only need... Less than 750 less or 748 left. See you on the mountain. Share, like, and subscribe.